Hey guys, happy Easter weekend. It is Friday, Good Friday, um, and forgive the noise out there, there's a lot going on in the house. <laughs> um, but I was upstairs just kind of culling through my bookshelf and realized that I had quite a few um, books set during Passion Week. And I didn't start this on Monday, but I thought why not for Easter weekend focus on reading Easter themed books. Um, for the true reason, it is not about bunnies, it is not about eggs, it is not about chicks and spring, um, but the true reason of Jesus resurrecting on the third day. So, I thought that we would focus on that this weekend. Um, I do have my shirt. It's I think it might be backwards for you guys, but it says a lot can happen in three days. And I wear it every Easter, every Good Friday. <laughs> Um, I wear it other times throughout the year because a lot can happen in three days. I um, mean, it's just a really good reminder um, that, you know, God has a plan and he's got it in control and our time is not his time. Um, so, anywho. Uh, I wanted to go over the books that are on my Easter weekend TBR. I will probably not get to all of them, um, but I definitely do want to try to get at least one or two done. I have four books on my TBR total. Three are in paper and one is in ebook format. Um, but the first one is The Soldier Who Killed a King by Daniel Kitts. I have never read anything by this author, never even heard of him. But I got this book at FRS in the swag bag last year and I was like, I'm perfect. We're going to read that next Easter. So. So I'm just going to read a couple sentences from the back for you guys. I'm not going to go into the full synopsis on all these, but I do just want to read a couple taglines so you guys kind of get what they're about. It um, says, a stunning story of Holy Week through the eyes of a Roman centurion. Um, so it sees the triumphal entry of the donkey riding king through the eyes of Marcus Long Longinus. Weird last name. Uh, the Centurion charged with keeping the streets from erupting into open rebellion. Next one I have is The Centurion by Ken Geer. Geyer? Um, I've seen this book floating around from time to time over the years. I've had it for a while, but again, I have to be in a very specific mood to read the more like biblical fiction stuff, but now's the time to do it. So, the tagline is, an ambitious Roman soldier, a stunning crucifixion, an unlikely romance, a long war, and a chance reunion. The moving parts that make the centurion a gripping story of love, duty, and sacrifice. So, yeah. I'm intrigued. We love a, we love a good romance, even if it's, you know, not the point of Easter, but we're never going to say no to a romance. <laughs> This is a reading channel after all, and this girl reads romance, but I'm excited to have a, a mixture of things. Then the last paperback one I have is A Stray Drop of Blood by Rosanna M. White, and this is One Little Drop to Soil Her Garment, One Little Drop to Cleanse Her Soul. And it's just like what I read from it, because I don't want to read the whole synopsis, the overview, um, is that... This girl is, she becomes a slave. It looks like um, something happens and tragedy strikes and she goes to the trial of Barabbas, which if you know uh, the story of Jesus' crucifixion, Barabbas is the murderer that the Jews decided to let free so that Jesus could die. Um, so she goes to that story but ends up running into Jesus somehow and like, his blood somehow gets like on her garment and heals her and that kind of story so intrigued to read this one this is probably going to be high up there i don't know if there's going to be like a romance romance subplot just because rosanna is known for being a historical romance author so i'm intrigued and then the last book i know absolutely nothing about i don't have a physical copy of it i don't even think it's a physical book um it's called at the cross by ashton doro uh, and this is a Easter short story, and it's, I just, I just have to show you. Look at them. 
um, in the manger and at the cross when they go together. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? I'm obsessed. But it's a Christmas short story and an Easter short story. I've never read the Christmas one. You think I would have with all the Christmas books I read last year, but I totally forgot about it. Because again, it's ebook only. Um, but I do want to read At the Cross. It's a short story, so I'm definitely going to get that done. Again, don't know what it's about. But I will let you know as I read. But yeah, those are the books that are on my Easter weekend TBR. Got a pretty full weekend, so we'll see how much reading gets done. tonight. Today, my brother and I are running to the church. We're going to work down there for a bit. And then tomorrow, I do have to work. And then after work, we are having a church work day uh, outside and cleaning and all kinds of stuff because... Sunday is Easter and then Saturday night I do have a zoom meeting for censorship by Savannah Scott I'm a part of a book club and we meet with Savannah um, so that will be tomorrow evening and then after that I don't think we have anything planned and then Easter of course church and I haven't heard anything of what we're doing with the family for Easter so we shall see but pretty full days so Again, probably won't get all four of the books done, but I definitely want to get at least two stories read. So that's the goal. I will keep you guys updated um, and let you know as we go on. So let me know in the comments if you are reading anything for Easter. Or do you have any traditions? Are you doing anything special? How are you celebrating? Um, do you do anything special for Passion Week, for Good Friday? Do you go to a Good Friday service? Also room needs to be cleaned that's definitely a thing that happens oh you can get a early peek at my easter dress you will see it on sunday all styled and stuff but that is my easter dress so okie dokie artichokey i'll see you guys in bed did just finished did just finish um, at the cross by Ashton Doro and if you haven't read this if you haven't heard of it I don't even care that you're watching this after Easter get this book um, I am really excited to read in the manger which is her Christmas short story um, and literally th this was like maybe 50 pages so such a quick read but so powerful i have my retainer in it starts in the garden when jesus is betrayed by judas and it is told you're seeing it from peter's perspective and then it goes into um simon of cyrene i believe is how you pronounce it um, his perspective when he is helping Jesus carry the cross and then it goes into the centurion who on like at the crucifixion sees that Jesus is the Messiah um, and then after Jesus dies it's Mary's perspective um, and then on the third day when he resurrects it's Mary Magdalene's perspective so it's five different parts of the crucifixion told from five different perspectives um, and it was so interesting just being in everyone's head and then seeing a different part of the crucifixion through someone else's mind because there was so much to that whole thing and there were so many people involved in it it was beautifully written um the crucifixion scenes i mean they always get me 
they're very powerful um but I mean every part was just powerful like I was tearing up it's just because if you just think of the magnitude of like what he actually did like I just can't imagine at all it's really I mean it was good it reminded me um, a little bit of the passion of the Christ which is a wonderful Easter movie um I'll probably watch that at some point this weekend because it is such a good movie um but yeah this was this was a really good good story so I highly highly suggest that you pick it up at some and if you like that, you can read In the Manger, because um, that's the, the birth of Jesus. So, all right, I am going to hit the hay. I'm going to go to bed. We are really struggling to focus on me, but my camera wants to go to bed too. <laughs> um, and then I will check in with you guys uh, tomorrow sometime. All right, good night. Happy Friday. Ooh, looking like a hot mess, but that's okay because uh, in just a bit I will be taking my hair down and be wearing a hat backwards. Why you might ask? <laughs> because a duke. I have my window open upstairs. Um, I'm getting ready. Sorry, hold on. You just got pause. Look at that handsome boy. Arlo. We went on a walk, um, but we just got back from the church. We had a cleaning day, getting ready for church tomorrow. Um, and I got home and took the big guy out for a walk. It's a gorgeous day here, absolutely stunning. Um, and we just got back and I'm getting ready for my Zoom call for censorship. You are getting your tongue on everything. That's disgusting. Ew. Um, but we will be meeting. We read censorship in the month of March. So we meet with Savannah and the girls, and it's a bunch of fun. Then Duke wore his hat backwards, so we decided if we have a hat, we're wearing it backwards. Um, and of course, I brought Adam. Adam is my coup. If you um, have read the series, the shipped series, um, you know the um, importance of the, hello, sorry. You know the importance of the ox because it is set in board ox. <laughs> um, but if you haven't read the Getting Ship series, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is one of my absolute favorites. Savannah is top tier. Love her work so much. Um, and I've just loved getting to do these monthly chats and we meet with savannah every month and a bunch of the girls when we can and it's just amazing they are not christian fiction um but they are entirely clean no language i'm gonna sit here momentarily no language anything like that um they're amazing and patty is a christian and you can just just definitely see that in i'm sorry i said patty that's her name um, she writes under the pen name Savannah Scott for her um, like rom-coms, but she you can you can see that worldview like come through in her books quite a bit. So love, she's amazing. Um, as far as other reading, I haven't picked anything up today yet, which I knew I wouldn't just because I worked and then we had the church work day, and then I knew I had my call this evening. Um, but it's still pretty early. It's about four. 30 the call starts at 5 so I'll definitely have some time this evening to read um, I think I want to watch the passion of the Christ at some point um, so yeah that's just kind of the check-in just wanted to pop in and say hi happy Saturday and um, I'll check in once I have some more information so okay hope your Saturday's going good It is a little after 10 on Saturday evening. Uh, a little bit of change of plans. 
Uh, my sister called me and asked me to um, iron her dress for Easter tomorrow and I realized that I should probably iron mine too. And it was already getting kind of late. Um, I'd had to shower and like make dinner and stuff. So I was like, I forgot that we have the Easter Carol. <laughs> The Veggie Tales movie, so I put that in and watched that while I ironed and steamed our dresses. Um, and it was just way too late to watch The Passion, which I do want to do this weekend because it is an Easter movie, um, and it is such a powerful, powerful movie. Um, as far as reading, didn't get anything done today, which is a okay. I had a very productive day. I am very tired. We will be meeting my aunt and cousins and grandma for Easter at some point after service tomorrow, um, but we'll have a little bit of a drive, so I will decide which book I want to take with me. Um, and I think what I might do is read the first chapter of all three. Actually, technically four, because I did find another book, um, that Lindsay Lemus recommended. I totally forgot about this book and I had a physical copy but it's Iscariot uh, by Tosca Lee and it's a novel of Judas and she said that it was fabulous um, and Chrissy read it recently too and also said that it was uh, really good so I'm going to read the first chapter of that, The Centurion, The Soldier Who Killed the King and straight drop of blood and see which one catches my fancy to read tomorrow so yeah that's what i'm planning on doing <laughs> just got home from l lunch slash dinner with my aunt and cousins and a couple people from our church. We went, dirt. we came home right after service and like changed our shoes and jumped in the car and drove and met them at Texas Roadhouse. That's where we typically go and it was good. Texas Roadhouse has the best rolls. Mm, so tasty um but we just got home and i put my jammies on and i think that i'm gonna go ahead and set up and watch the passion of the christ i did start um the soldier who killed the king by david mitz or kitz or fitz or whatever his name is um i took that with me in the car and started that and I think I'm almost 50 pages into it. It's moving pretty fast. The chapters are really short. And it's kind of cool because each um, chapter, it's almost telling what's happening hour by hour. So it'll be intriguing. We're still, so we just got to the part where Jesus flipped the tables in the temple. Um, which is always a fun story. I like that part of the story. Uh, <laughs> But we just got to that part in the book, so it's been interesting. He's a Roman uh, soldier, and you know they're on the lookout for the Messiah who is supposed to take down the Romans. So they're all a little on edge, and he goes undercover essentially to get up close to Jesus and kind of see like who is this man that they're talking about. Like why is he such a big deal to the Jews? So it's been interesting. I'm really intrigued to see how it goes throughout the story because he can already tell that there's something different just by the way that Jesus is carrying himself. So I have a feeling it's going to be really good. So I'm excited to keep reading that. Um, but yeah, I am going to go ahead and set up the Passion of the Christ and watch that and eat. I'm going to eat a little snacky snack. Hands down, the best Easter snack other than Reese's eggs. The Robin's eggs, the best Easter snack. So I'm going to eat these and watch The Passion of the Christ and cry. So I'm going to go take my contacts out so that I can cry without worrying about them. Um, and then probably read some more of The Soldier Who Killed the King. And then potentially pick up another book. I'm not sure. We'll see. 
we'll see how late it is but yeah that's the that's the plan for the rest of the evening um church was really good we had a wonderful service my dad preached a really really good message um and he was like telling a story throughout the message and i was like it was kind of a um like a human take on the magnitude of what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross and it was just it's a really good message if you'd like to watch it I will leave the link to the live stream in my description um it was it was really good the story was and he he was telling a story that he had heard before so um, it might be a story someone else has already heard but that was the first time I'd ever heard it it was a very good story and very emotional um and a very good representation of of what Jesus did for us so yeah all right I'm gonna stop talking I'm gonna go watch Passion of the Christ oh, such a good movie and I will check in with you guys in a bit happy Sunday happy Easter hey guys let's recap this weekend shall we <laughs> um man Easter takes it out of me I love it. It is one of my absolute favorite holidays, um, other than Christmas. Christmas is my absolute favorite holiday. Um, but I, I love Easter. And this year, I just, I really wanted to focus on the real reason for it. And I'm not saying that I, I never do. I, I always try to focus on why we celebrate, um, but sometimes it gets a little difficult and it gets easy to get caught up in spring and the sunshine and just flowers and happiness and you know you see everybody doing their easter egg hunts and the easter bunny and decorating and just you can get so caught up in that and this year i was talking to some friends and i like i didn't even decorate our house for easter and i'm a huge decorator like i have any holiday you can think of, I probably have a decoration for. I love decorating our house. But this year I just, Easter didn't really feel like Easter, if that makes sense. Until this weekend, until I really took time to slow down and focus my attention and my energy on just taking in as much of the story as I could it was just a very peaceful Easter our Easter's have never been very stressful um, there aren't any kids in our family um, so there aren't any like Easter egg hunts or anything that we have to do we have a really small congregation at church so it's not like we have any anything crazy going on um, so it's not like Easter's have ever been stressful, but this one was just peaceful, if that makes sense. And I really think it's because I truly shifted my focus over the weekend. Um, and I know I had other things going on with our Zoom call and work and things like that, but I tried not to take in any kind of media that wasn't Easter-based, if that made sense. Um, so I was only reading Easter books. I was only watching movies that were Easter based. I was listening to um, music set around the story of Easter. And I think it really did change just my mentality over this weekend. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I didn't get as many books as I wanted to get finished done, which I totally knew was going to happen. <laughs> because I decided to do this on Friday afternoon <laughs> um, and I was so busy this weekend like it was crazy so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do as much as I wanted to um, but I truly think that I I had a wonderful weekend and I'm happy with what I got done. I read At the Cross by Ashindoro. Absolutely beautiful story. And again, please, 
please read it at some point, even if you save it for next Easter. But you don't even have to save it for next Easter. Um, I watched a Betty Tales movie and watched an Easter Carol, which is always a great, great little quick pick me up, even though it is slightly terrifying. <laughs> Um, and then I just finished The Passion of the Christ, which whew, always takes me out, man. That is a heavy, heavy movie, but it is a heavy, heavy story. One that is filled with so much hope, um, but it's easy to get bogged down in the journey because the hope came way at the end. So, um, but I did get, I did start The Soldier Who Killed the King. And I got 40 pages in, 7 chapters in. And while I'm really enjoying it, again, the writing is super, super easy. I'm enjoying the idea behind it. I am probably not going to finish this tonight. And I'm probably going to set it down for a while. Um, I, d I do want to finish it at some point. But I just do not have the brain capacity to read this crucifixion the crucifixion is a very heavy heavy topic and, and i get i get it um but after a while after that's like you know we we talked about it today and my dad was telling a story that kind of puts it into perspective and then really just focusing on easter and than watching The Passion of the Christ. My brain is kind of toast. <laughs> um, and I just kind of feel like I need something a little more lighthearted right now. But I definitely do want to pick this up at some point. Whether it's I go on another like Easter themed video, like another part of the year, because again, we should be remembering Easter and celebrating Easter all year round. Um, or I should say the resurrection. We should be celebrating Passion Week and the resurrection. We shouldn't ever forget about it. Um, so if I ever need a reminder, I might pick up that book again like during the year. But if not, I know for next year that I'll probably do a week-long vlog and read Easter book set during the week of the Passion. This got um, long and a little bogged down and I, no, I didn't want to keep it light because this is not, it's not really a light subject at all. <laughs> I'm thankful for the resurrection. I'm thankful for the third day. Um, but you can only have the good after the bad. Um, so I just always want to remember that. Those are things like we should be remembering them and it should, but we get so hectic with life that I think we kind of um, can put it on the back burner a bit. So I'm very thankful that I took the weekend to truly focus on the resurrection. And I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope you enjoyed your Easter. Um, let me know, do you have any special traditions? I do love that people have yeah, special Easter traditions. We've never really had them. Please don't take this as me shunning Easter eggs um, or Easter egg hunts because I love Easter egg hunts. <laughs> I love Easter as a whole in all capacities. Um, never gonna turn down a robin egg or a Reese egg or any Easter candy but I just never want us to forget the real reason for it and why we celebrate so that's what all this is to say essentially um but yeah I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter thanks for coming along on this vlog I hope you enjoy it and I think that's it I'll see you guys in the next one Bye.